as I've said from the beginning, I have never said, I have my opinions as I, as I make clear, but I have never said you shouldn't be wearing a mask. Don't wear a mask. If you do, you're a pro. Never. I have simply said it should be your choice. I, the science, which it doesn't, does not support what they're telling you it does, period, which I'll prove definitively today, as well as I mean, any number of other things, it should be your choice constitutional rights and all, you know, those little side discussions they pretend are just not important today, despite their swearing an oath to that when they take their powerful office, right? The point is it should be your choice. I've never said point blank that you shouldn't be. So bottom line is I'm simply saying, well, here's information. You should use that to come to your own conclusions. But according to them, that's not allowed today. You're not allowed to be a critical thinker and look at other information because if they think that information is not allowable in the discussion, well, now you're fake news. You can't talk about it. You're not even allowed to entertain it as a, as a discussion point. Well, here's something that we know is not real. Let's talk about it and overview it. Nope, not allowed. They're now even censoring CDC, NIH previous studies. Not even just from their own areas, but now we're actually seeing a, a, gra a reaching censorship program right now to remove these past inf information databases from the internet. It's right now, and I'm going to show you a live example of it. And it will blow your mind. Well, probably not. It'll probably just, you'll probably say, yep, exactly what we expect. But because of that censorship, let's start today on the mass topic. Now, I'm not going to go rehashing all the old stuff we already did, except only one thing to make a point. This is all new information. So the, the article they're censoring, plus the other four, five, six I've done on this topic, are all referencing verifiable data, and they just don't want you to see it. Now understand, they're not even saying that that's fake. They're saying that, well, they now have a difference of opinion, so suddenly the ones that they did years ago are, no, are, are censorable? I mean, do you realize how crazy that is? This is them controlling the information flow. And this next one is going to show you that this is what's literally happening in real time. Now this... And by the way, the point I made in the, mo the beginning was this wasn't meant to be the beginning of the show. In fact, I wasn't really even going to get into the mass discussion again today. But because they're so clearly trying to censor this, this is important. And we need to make sure you're aware. I'm not telling you not to. I'm simply saying that this is information that you have a right to see as a free individual. That they keep screaming that you are. As they delete things and tell you you're not allowed to see it. Fa why face masks don't work? A revealing review by John Hardy, BDS, uh, MSC, PhD, FRCDC, right? I mean, just this guy is an expert, okay? Now, this is on the oral health. Now, this is in regard to a dentist perspective. Same kind of study, same kind of research, but the same thing in dental scenarios. They use masks in the same, same stated purpose as you see in any other medical scenario. So the study is the same, whether it's from dental perspective or medical perspective or any other perspective. It is the same studies and the same research. Now, this is from 2016. That is so incredibly important here. And you'll see why, not just because of his opinion, but because of everything that he lays out here. An overwhelming overview of everything that's been covered up until that point and how everyone from every walk of life was saying that these things were not valid and they just ignored it. October 18th, 2016, before this topic was politicized, before you could argue there was some kind of political motivation to argue. So why would this be an argument being made in so many cases before we got here? Trends and infections control. I recommend you read this in its entirety. Take note that this is only on the Wayback Machine right now, not actually on the website. I'll show you why in a moment. Trends in Infectious Control. It says, while commenting on guidelines for face masks, Dr. M. Rupp of the Society for Healthcare Epidemiology of America noted that some of the practices relating to infection control that have been in place for decades, quote, haven't been subjected to the same strenuous investigation that, for instance, a new medicine might be subjected. Kind of sounds like vaccines too, by the way, which I'm not going to get into today. I pushed it off till tomorrow, but I have a lot to go over Derek's recent article. But it's the same thing. Why aren't vaccines, for instance, subject to the same kind of strenuous investigation and random controlled trials and everything else that other medications are? Well, you know why? Because by definition, they're not actually medicine. And neither are these, neither are these genetically modifying ones that we're using today. Now, it says he opined that perhaps, uh, the next part, Dr. R. Mc, uh, McIntyre, McIntyre, probably, a, pol a prolific investigator of face masks, has forcefully stated that a historical that the historical reliance on theoretical assumptions for recommending 
PPEs, personal protective equipment, should be replaced by rigorously acquired clinical data, by the way, which doesn't exist, she, but not even at this very moment. She noted that most studies on face masks have been based on laboratory simulated tests. Oh, weird, like the ones they're forcing out now, which, quite simply, have limited clinical applicability as they cannot account for such human factors as compliance, coughing, talking, and any number of things. Also take note that every single thing we're pointing to is referenced right here at the bottom. All of them. All of them linked, all of the information, everything for you to go through and look for yourself. And by the way, I've done it. All the ones I'm telling you right now, I've looked at, and all of them are very clearly legitimate. Doesn't mean you should take any one of them at face value and blindly use that one as gospel. You should look at all of these things and realize how many of them are coming to this conclusion and how few we're looking at today based on models and hypothetical statements forcing you to tell you that this is the only thing you should be doing. It says cover. Well, I mean, that's actually not even necessarily accurate. It's forcefully telling you that this is what will protect you, right? This has to happen. If you don't, you're going to go to jail. Now it says covering the nose and mouth, and this is just the beginning. Wait till we get to the real part of this. Covering the nose and mouth for infection control started in the early 1900s when the German physician Karl Flug, I believe, discovered that ex exhaled droplets could transmit tuberculosis. Now this is the point. This is where, this, and even this, by the way, is now being revealed it's not actually even protecting you in regard to blood and spit, but that was the point. It was about stopping your spit as a physician from flying into an open wound. That's it. Now it says the science regarding the aerosol transmission of infectious diseases has for years been based on what is now appreciated to be very outmodeled research and an overly simplistic interpretation of the data. Now that is the current state, even 2020. Also the perception. Now it says modern studies are employing sensitive instruments and interpretive techniques to better understand the size distribution of potentially infectious aerosols particles. Now it says in 2014, the nursing profession, now this is so important, especially considering, you know, nursing homes and how, how relevant of a part of that, the story is, of how relevant of a part of this story that was. Seeing as how what, in some cases it was 80% of the total deaths were in nursing homes. Well, this is especially relevant. In 2014, the nursing profession was implored implored to quote stop using practice interventions that are based on tradition but instead adopt protocols that are based on critical evaluations of the available evidence meaning not face masks or at the very least find available find, do get some evidence that they actually do something which by the way it's not there now this one is referencing number seven right here nursing traditions oft trump based uh, uh often ba Trump evidence-based science, infection control today, right? I mean, these are all mainstream for the most part. Now it says a December, 2015 article in the national post seems to ascribe to Dr. Gardam, director of infectious prevention and control, Toronto university health network, the quote, I need to choose which stupid arbitrary infection control rules I'm going to push. That's Canada. That's the director of infectious prevention and control. But let's pretend like that has no bearing on where, but for, you know, in so in just, in just so many years, suddenly it goes from none of these things are real and they're all based on hypothetical, tra you know, tradition based things that we've never proven to suddenly, well, yeah, they work and you have to do it or you're going to go to jail. Very interesting how, and by the way, they held this opinion all the way up until, you know, 2020, when suddenly COVID-19 developed all these scientists who started saying, based on models, they kind of work, probably do it because maybe they work. That's actually most of their conclusions. That, it, you, that there's no doubt that it caused some kind of effect. So you probably should do it. And then Sci Wall Street Journal poses and says, well, oh, evidence says they work, mandate. Now it's not actually what it's been saying. Well, let's keep going, let's keep going. Down to face masks. History. Cloth or cotton gauze masks have been used. Now remember, cotton and cloth is what we're being told to wear from CDC. Everyone. We're being told that is the man, that is what you should be doing. Get a face, get a cloth, get a, a handkerchief, get a buy one from the store. Cloth, which is what we've already shown you, increases the risk of illness, which this article also makes the point. All the way back in 2016. 
despite the fact that the other studies are from two, later 19, 2020, you know, but they just didn't care back then either. And they're telling you to do it now, even as this science is there. And guess what? There's never been any other study that's challenged that, that says, hey, guess what? Cloth masks actually don't hold the moisture and create spores and cause more illness and bacteria, all right? We're not even talking viruses here. We're just talking about general illness. The fact that you'll get more, generally more ill by keeping this cloth face mask on your face, even if it's repeatedly washed, because even then it increases the pore size and it loses any kind of effic effic uh, efficacy. And, and again, I'll show you that in a moment. But you see, all these things are very clearly defined, and yet we're just playing this nuance game and swimming through that and going, well, it stops something. Well, maybe it kind of works, so you might as well do it. And if you don't, you're going to jail, right? I mean, or $500 fine. That is not science. Just th the fact that it could do something so you might have to do it is ridiculous. It really is. Now, that comes straight down to constitutional rights. And to argue that that doesn't play a factor is ignorant especially as scientists and, and Nobel laureates and educated experts all around the world from all these different studies going back decades are saying the same thing right up until now. Even at that, just because we have scientists saying, I disagree, or because we have studies saying, my modeling says otherwise. You can think that you can consider that those could be real, as you should, but to ignore all of the others and say that's the truth without actually considering the others, again, is simply ignorant. Now it says cotton or cloth gauze masks have been used since the late 19th century to protect sterile fields from spit and mucus. Again, that was the only point. Everything else that's grown from that, as they point out in this article, became was just tradition, hypothetical assumptions. Now again, look, referencing 5, 17, 18, all, all of these things, all these simple statements are backed up by scientific studies. A secondary function was to protect the mouth and nose of the wearer from the sprays and splashes of blood and bodily fluids created during surgery. So again, just simply cutting into somebody and having blood maybe not go in your mouth, right? That's what that was about. But even then, as new studies have shown, cloth masks, some up to 97% get through. That's, that is from an NIH study which I can show you in a moment. I have it set up, but it's just funny how these things are verifiably pointed out and no one's challenged it. And yet we still tell you that you should do it. Well, if it stops 3%, then you should. No, that's ridiculous. That means that every time 97% is coming through yet. Yeah, does that sound safe? No. Now, maybe you could argue that that may small thing may do something, but then when you realize that cloth masks are in fact increasing the risk of illness on their own right, no, you should not be forced to do this. Well, let's not pretend this is not creating a gigantic boon for the big pharma industry. Any kind of medications and treatments and illnesses and, oh, and vaccines and, oh, it's just a huge boon for the big industry, right? Let's pretend like that's just their righteous, you know, that's their, they're just doing it because they're good people. Because our history is pretty damn obvious that's not the case. It says, as noted above, in the early 20th century, masks were used to trap infectious droplets expelled by the wearer, thus possibly reducing disease transmission to others. Since the mid-20th century until today, face masks have been increasingly used for entirely opposite functions. Right? That's important. That is to prevent the wearer from inhaling respiratory pathogens, which is what they're pushing. Despite the, the backpedal into, well, they stop spitting stuff, so we might as well. Right? That's not what they're actually saying. They're arguing, and the only reason this would even make sense legally to mandate across the whole country, even for healthy people, is that it stops the spread of the virus, which it does not, even when you're spitting inside of the mask. Which is what all the studies that I keep showing you have repeatedly found. It says, indeed, the most... Cr Current dental infection control recommendations insist a face mask be worn as a key component of personal protection against airborne pathogens, right? Despite that absolutely not being verifiable by the evidence. In fact, showing the exact opposite. It says literature reviews have confirmed that wearing a mask during surgery has, dang it, that's not the point I wanted to cover, has no impact whatsoever on the wound infection rates. Now, guys, look, this is not even talking about virus transmission. This is not talking about whether or not the mask protects you or protects your grandma, right? This is literally saying that their own literature reviews have confirmed, not we think, as all the new things are saying, we possible protection, they have confirmed that wearing a mask during surgery actually has no impact for the only purpose they were ever created for, which means spit does find its way through into open wounds. 
no impact whatsoever on wound infection rates during clean surgery. A recent, and then it backs it up with five studies, six, no, five studies. A recent 2014 report states categorically that no clinical trials have ever shown that wearing a mask prevents contamination of surgical sites. So this is just the first point. No, even even the original purpose, it's, they're now finding that that we've never, we can, let me make this very clear too. What that statement means does not mean that it necessarily doesn't. It simply says that there's no evidence. They have never been able to, after repeatedly trying to find it, repeatedly studying it, repeatedly trying to figure it out, they have no clinical trials that have ever shown wearing a mask prevents contamination. Don't you find that interesting? Now, but also recognize that these studies always tend to take a more broad approach with their claims, right? Basically, what they're saying is there's, it doesn't work. It does not have any effect on contamination of these sites. But all they can really pour, empirically point out is that where they have, they've never been able to show that there's any kind of an effect. But today, that's being manipulated into saying, well, it's still, it still may do something, so do it. That's not what they're saying. They're finding that it doesn't help you. Now, it says no matter... This is about structure and fit. And this is what I keep pointing out, right? The fact that they're not sealed against your face. Now it says, no matter how well a mask conforms to the shape of a person's face, it is not designed to create an airtight seal around the face. It is important to appreciate that if masks contained filters capable of trapping viruses, the peripheral gaps around the mask would continue to permit the inhalation of unfiltered air and aerosol. So even if they actually had some kind of filter, which they don't, outside of an N95 respirator, then the gaps would still let it in, right? Do you see how how illogical all of this is? And on the filtering capacity, it says instead the dynamics of aerosolized particles and their molecular attraction to filter fibers are such that at a certain range of sizes, both large and small particles will penetrate through a face mask backed up by that study. Accordingly, it should be no surprise that a study of eight brands of face masks found that they did not filter out 20 to 100% of particles varying in size. Right? So from virus all the way up to macro particles. Also, in some cases, 100%. Like, do you not realize how clear that is? Now, just because we're told that, some, that this mask in your face does something, people would intrinsically say, no, it can't be. But there's been studies that have done their research and shown this in a real setting using random controlled trials, opposite of what anything you're being told by the mainstream today. Which, again, was a point I reference about the 97%. That's what that's saying. Even spit and blood, sometimes 100%, well, in varying sizes. Now, it says another investigation showed penetration range from 5 to 100% when masks were challenged with relatively large microparticles. That's very important. But it says a further study found that masks were incapable of filtering 80 to 85% of particles varying in size from 0.3 to 2.0. Now that's even bigger. Now it says investigation identified, or technically that's specifically in the middle it looks like. So 0.1 to 4.0, this one is saying that 80 to 85 specifically right in that middle grouping, which I believe is the spit size, but I don't want to misquote that. Now it says that uh, it should be concluded from these and similar studies that the filter material of face mask does not retain or filter out viruses or other submicron particles when this under when this understanding is confirmed with the poor fit of masks when you know taken in conjunction looking at them together it is readily appreciated that neither the filter performance nor the facial fit characteristics of face masks qualify them as being devices which protect respiratory against respiratory infections, you know, like COVID-19. Now it says perf performance standards. Face masks are not, this is so relevant. Think about this. Face masks are not subject to any regulations. Let me say that again. Face masks are not subject to any regulations. And here he's citing number 11, controversy, respiratory protection for healthcare workers. Here's a link you can look at yourself. So these masks that you're being told, especially you know, your handkerchief and the mask you buy from the store with your cute little picture on it. Yeah, they're not subject to any regulations. So you might as well just be putting a rag in front of your mouth. You might as well just carry a piece of paper. There's no regulation, so you don't even know. 
Think about how, how in the world can they be banking on this and saying that everyone has to do this around the, around the country, putting people in jail, finding them for not doing so, when they're not even regulating whether or not these things work. They're, whole, they're grasping on to, for, to the idea that some basic early presentation of these masks where they block spit is the, is the only thing, even though we just showed you that in some cases, 100% of the time, it doesn't do that. And then it doesn't protect you against the virus, which has become the, the, the idea in the minds of the people wearing them. It doesn't do that either. I'm still not telling you not to. I'm just simply saying that you should have a right to see this information to come to your own conclusions. But according to YouTube and your government, you're not smart enough to do that. Right? You're, you're, you're just a normal little peon. They need to make the decisions for you because you're too dumb. That's what they're telling us. They think the same. We're all too dumb. They think I'm too dumb. They think you're too dumb. They think we just don't understand, right? We just get too caught up in the conspiracy theory stuff and we don't know how to differentiate between reality. So they have to step in and tell you what to do. But you're free. Don't worry. You're free. We just, you're just free up until your stupidity gets in the way, right? That's what they're trying to say. Does any American out there agree with that? Zero regulations. To obtain the necessary approval to sell masks. All that a manufacturer needs to do is satisfy the FDA that any new device is substantially the same as any mask currently available. All right, so you know it's a piece of pay, it's a it's a piece of fabric. It covers your face. Okay, perfect. That's what it's saying, right? If if, if right now the only thing that's constitutes a face mask is that it's covering your face, it's not. It doesn't have to be a certain filtration. Doesn't have to be a certain size. I mean, if they're telling you to wear a thin bandana, it doesn't make any difference. Now, it says, as ironically noted by the Occupational Health and Safety Agency, you know, OSHA, for healthcare in BC, British Columbia, there is no, oh, excuse me, it's, it's similar, but not OSHA. It's Occupational Health and Safety Agency, but it's in the BC, but it's the same idea. It's about occupational health and, and making sure that your health, that your working environment is safe. It says, quote, there is no specific requirement to prove that existing masks are effective. And there's no standard test or set of data requiring supporting the assertion of equivalence. So nothing. It says, nor does the FDA conduct or sponsor testing of surgical masks. So what are we talking about? They're just a piece of fabric. I mean, that's staggering to me. Now, here's where it gets important. Between 2004 and 2016... Now, remember that we were just pointing out Ben Swan's video, myself, all this time up in, I mean, every damn day, it seems like for the last two month, month or so, pointing out all the studies, including the one that John Rappaport just published as some groundbreaking thing, because it is, but we've been talking about this for a month. Here's the CDC study from May saying they don't do anything. That's the CDC study from May of 2020 saying that masks do not protect you. But let's pretend like a new one they just rushed out that only talks about modeling somehow trumps that, right? It's like, oh, that one's fake now and this one's real because they just did it. It's the most recent. That's just the, that, this, is, it, this is a willful ignorance about this topic. But we're pointing out from 2015 to 2020, all of their studies came to the same conclusion that they didn't protect you. There's no evidence to suggest they do anything. So realize, jumping back even further from 2004 to 2016, He's pointing out that a dozen research articles, uh, research or review articles have been published on the inadequacies of face masks. So let's just start saying from 2004 all the way to 2020, pretty much every year there were studies done that come to the same conclusion, that they were not enough evidence to support that masks do anything to protect you. Look at all the studies that he lists. Look at that. 5, 6, 11, 17, 19, 20, 21, 25, 26, 27, 28, and 31. And they're all right here for you to look at yourself. All of them. From 2004 to 2016, at least a dozen, all came to the same conclusion, the inadequacy of face masks. All agree that poor facial fit and limited filtration characteristics of masks make them unable to prevent the wearer inhaling, uh, to prevent, unable to prevent in, 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 inhaling airborne particles at all. Now it says Dr. Harrisman and uh, Busao conclude that face masks will not protect against the inhalation of aerosols meaning a virus, meaning anything, anything in the air. Dr. Zhu, or Zhao, and colleagues stated, there's a lack of substantial evidence to support claims that face masks protect either patient or surgeon from infectious contamination. 
On and on and on it goes, all listed below for you to read. In the same year, Dr. Uh, McIntyre noted that randomized controlled trials of face masks fail to prove their efficacy. How much do we need to see before this starts getting ridiculous? I think we're well past that point. This one says, quote, healthcare workers have long relied heavily on surgical masks to provide protection against influenza and other infections. Yet there are no convincing scientific data that uh, that support the, effic the effectiveness of masks for respiratory protection. The masks we use are not designed for such purposes. And when tested, when tested, they have proved to vary widely infiltration capability, allowing penetration of aerosol particles ranging from four to 90%. Yeah, that dances back to the idea that guess what? We don't check them or regulate them in any way, but we're going to force you to do it and put you in jail if you don't wear one. Think about that. Now realize again, guys, this is not just one person's opinion. This is not just him writing these things. He is stating evidence that people have come to conclusions from actual legitimate organizations. Now I say legitimate in the sense that, you know, they're the, they're the ones that we are pointing, we're pointed at. Go look at these institutions. That doesn't mean we should take them at face value or that they wouldn't be possible, you know, capable of lying for politics. How much are we going to ignore though? All of these things, all of them referenced. Conclusions. The primary reason for mandating the wearing of face masks is to protect dental personnel, and this is in regard to specifically dental uh, situations, from airborne pathogens, right? But we can see that applies in any situation. That's what they're, we're told they're being warned for today. That's the perception, right? Even though we just had a study we just talked about where the doctor was saying the same thing with the, the psychological manipulation of people in this regard is dangerous. Didn't care about that then, right? We're still here. But it says that this review has established, not we think, not possible, not it may, but this has established that face masks are incapable of providing such a level of protection. Interesting. Unless the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, national and provincial dental associations and regulatory agencies publicly admit this fact, they will be guilty of, per, uh, in, of uh, perpetuating a myth which will be a disservice to the dental profession and its patients. Subject to the same, wait, so he's saying the, we, we need these to be subject to the same rigorous testings as any new clinical intervention. Why wouldn't they be? Seems pretty interesting and revealing, doesn't it? Maybe there's an agenda here. It says, surely the hallmark of a mature profession is one which permits new evidence to trump established beliefs. Yeah, you would think so, wouldn't you? It says, quote, we should not be ashamed of our change of method uh, to change our methods. Rather, we should be ashamed not to do so. You're damn right we should. But that's what's happening right now. Whether it's for profit, whether it's for control, whether it's simply because they don't want to look wrong. At the end of the day, the evidence is clear. And we're ignoring it. All of this. All of this stuff that we can continue to point to. That they're not researching, they're not regulating. That all these studies from 2004 to 2020 are all coming to the same conclusion. You know, this the very thing that YouTube just deleted from YouTube because it was accurate and they can't let you see that, which is probably this one too. Who knows? Doesn't mean I'm going to stop talking about it because I will never self-censor regardless because I'm streaming on a lot of different platforms. YouTube is just one. And you know what, guys? YouTube is quickly becoming irrelevant and soon we'll likely see that. And soon they will likely see that because the reality is this move right here was a big mistake because that's an easily verifiable act that is legally, legally disconnected from their community guidelines and anything they claim to uphold. So it will come back to bite them. The idea is that all of this is being ignored because they don't want you seeing it. And you want proof of that? Well, let's hop over to the current page because remember, this is on the Wayback Machine. Let's take a look at their website. Because remember, the, when I was reading, I looked this up, somebody sent it to me. It was, it was live as of today, I believe. As of this morning, if not last night. This website was active and live. This article was active and live. Oh, but you know what? Suddenly, Oral Health, some oralhealthgroup.com random site, removed it. You don't want to know why? Well, if you're looking for why face masks don't work, a revealing review by John Hardy, B BDS, MSC, PhD, FRCDC, it has been removed. 
Oh, you know why? Well, the content was published in 2016, and, you know, it's just no longer relevant to our current climate. Oh, not because you were pressured by governmental entities to remove this very revealing and very, very scientifically verified claimed and backed up by all the different studies. Yeah, that's not why. You just kind of woke up today and said, you know, this just seems old and outdated. Let's just get rid of it. Is that how science works? I guess it does now today in our bastardized world that we live in. Please note that the content from Oral Health Group was primarily intended to educate and inform dental professionals. That's crazy. This is real-time censor. I mean, censorship, straight-up censorship, but they are editing history in real time. They are removing the reality. This morning, this is published. It's been there from 2016. And they want you to believe that, oh, well, you know, we just decided as of today that, you know, it's just old and outdated. Not that this challenges the very clear lies that they're pushing on everybody in regard to how effective these things are. No, not that at all. Not that they clearly don't have some kind of political motivation here. That is outrageous to me. But what we need to see here, guys, more than anything we're looking at, is that this is a very clear real world, real world example of them actively trying to reach out and find everything out there that challenges this very flimsy, do it because it may work narrative that they're using to put people in jail. That they just can't abide. So oralhealth.com, they just probably didn't take much trouble at all. But ask yourself why such a thing would be censored, as it's referenced more than any mainstream thing I've ever seen in my life. It's referenced, it has links and, and confirmation of all the claims they make, unlike everything you hear from the mainstream media. And they deleted it. But lucky for you, people like myself and others that do the same thing, save these things for you. So my video, whether they delete it or not, since it'll be on BitChute and everywhere else, will be a living, a living memory of this. But it's on the Wayback Machine. But we also know that Wayback Machine is not completely secure in its own right. I've seen things removed from there as well. So take this, save it, remember the information, download the different studies, show people. Show people not that you want to go up to them and say, look, face masks don't work. Show them to say, look, here is actual science that says that there's no evidence they work. I'm open to your perspective. How about you show me the same thing? And when they show you a study that talks about modeling previous data or hypothetical simulations, you tell them, well, guy, that's not real world stuff. And by the way, those aren't random controlled trials. Here, here are studies from every year from 2004 to 2020 that all said the same thing. All of them challenged it. All of them said it was unsafe. And why didn't the government do anything that time? Why didn't they do anything in 2004, 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, every time? Why didn't every year a new study came up? Why didn't they go, hmm, maybe we should change our perspective? No, they didn't. Why? Are you telling me that they somehow weirdly knew all this time that they were going to end up being wrong? Or is there far, far, far more going on in this? As always, it's up to you to decide for yourself.